This is the Mango Power E. It's a serious power station for serious backup. <laughs> and before we get started, I do have to throw out a shameless plug for my website. So if you're interested in free giveaways or you want personal recommendations on which system is perfect for your setup, head over to my website, thesolarpit.com. You can answer a few quick questions and I'll personally guide you to the best system for your needs. Now let's take a closer look at the inverter performance, battery capacity, fast AC and solar charging, UPS function, safety features, thermal management, app control, noise levels, portability, and limitations, and see how this system stocks up. Let's start with the basics. The Mango Power E stands about 19 and a half inches tall, 17 and a half inches wide, and 14 and a half inches deep, including the wheels. It weighs just over 100 pounds. So this is not something you'd carry on your back, but it is portable thanks to the extension handle, the wheels, and the dedicated bottom grip for safe lifting. The feet look to be pretty solid and they're built to hold up over time. Looks like they'll support the weight of the unit even if there's expansion battery stacked on top. The port layout is straightforward. AC, DC, USB, solar, and expansion ports. And remember, if you want a split phase 240 volt system, you can connect two of these units using the M socket. Let's dive a little deeper into the inverter because this is equipped with that 3000 watt continuous output inverter that can surge up to 6000 watts. It does deliver pure sine wave output, which I did confirm, so your sensitive electronics will remain safe. And the fan noise at over 3000 watts of incoming power, I measured it at 48 to 49 decimals, which is very quiet with that type of input. The UPS function switches between power sources in 20 milliseconds, providing uninterrupted power for critical appliances. Now, I don't have any special equipment to actually nail this down to the millisecond, but I did connect this to my transfer uh, panel and I was able to make that switch from one source to the other source. And there was a slight flicker in my LED lights, but I have never tested anything that didn't cause a flicker when I was using that breaker to make that switch. So. Overall, I will say that this is a pass in my test, but I can't confirm down to the milliseconds that it did do that under 20 milliseconds, but I can say that it did it and I had no disruption in any of the appliances that I had turned on. In real world testing, I connected the Mango Power E to a transfer panel and backed up my entire 2000 square foot shop. That is all circuits at 120 volts with just one unit. Remember, if you did two units, you were able to back up even larger appliances that require 240 volts up to 6,000 watts. During testing, the unit was able to surge up to 3,633 watts before shutting down. The overload protection activated perfectly, passing our safety test exactly as it should. And I did perform a continuous discharge on this, which is very important to me when I'm testing a portable power station. And it was able to maintain very close to 3000 watts of continuous output until it kicked off at the bottom part of your state of charge, which is uh, what it's supposed to do, but not all portable power stations can do that. So I can say confidently that this is a 3000 watt continuous output. The Mango Power E uses CATL LFP batteries, those are the same EV grade cells that are used in a majority of electric vehicles. That is the largest manufacturer of LFP cells in the world. They're the number one ranked LFP cell batteries. So that's pretty important to have that stamped right here on the side that it, the cells are by CATL because we know that we're getting a high quality battery cell within the Mango Power E itself. Each unit has a rated capacity of 3,533 watt hours. During testing, I was able to get a usable AC discharge of 2,921 watt hours, or about 83% of the rated capacity. The batteries are rated for over 6,000 cycles, which translates to over 20 years of lifespan and comes with a 10 year warranty, a must have for long-term peace of mind. Let's discuss the charging methods for the Mango Power E because you can charge it really fast. Whether you're using AC wall power, which supports 15 amp and 30 amp, if you have the optional 30 amp plug for this, it comes with a 15 amp and you can do that as fast as an hour and a half to full charge. 
Solar charging supports up to 2000 watts via the MPPT, which is extremely fast for off-grid solutions. You can charge this via your car or use AC and solar simultaneously for a fast recharge. Now, I do wanna talk about the MPPT real quick because I was able to get very close to the 2000 watts of solar input. That's something that's kind of rare on portable power stations because of the voltage range or the amps that they allow you to put into the MPPT. And I was able to add four of those 400 watt panels because they're bifacial. So it put me over the voltage if they were start to get gain on the backside. So it'd be over 2000 watts if we put five of those on there. So I was able to get very close to that if I have the right panels, maybe even lower the wattage down off those panels just slightly, say 370 watt panels, I think would pair perfectly with this system. And it does come with a variety of safety protections, which include low and high temperature protection, overloading, overcharging, over discharging, short circuit, and leakage. The UPS function keeps the devices you're running power during power outages. The thermal management is excellent. Even under maximum discharge and max input, the system keeps internal components cool and operating perfectly. The app is very basic, but it is functional. It does provide enough control to manage the system, but it doesn't offer the in-depth monitoring and advanced features I've seen in other systems. This is one area where Mango Power could certainly improve. Let's discuss the overall build quality of the uh, materials that were used to build the Mango Power E. I think this is an area where Mango Power could improve and make this a really nice system because I think that the plastics that they use feel a little cheaper to me than I've tested on other systems in this class. If you press in certain areas on this housing, it kind of flexes a little bit, which kind of feels cheap. The wheels, I feel like, are some of the cheaper wheels that I've seen on a system. Now, this doesn't affect the overall functionality that I tested on it, but the overall build quality of the uh, housing, I think, is a little bit cheaper than other systems that I've tested. And also, another issue that I have is on the display screen, the time remaining or the time charging isn't accurate. That needs to be updated. That could be updated through a firmware update, but it's definitely something that needs to be addressed by Mango Power because I use that function a lot when using portable power stations. And if that's not accurate, that's upsetting to me. Then that leads me right into my next concern of the state of charge that it's displaying on the screen. It'll say that it's at 100% for a long period of time, even under a load. And then once it reaches 99, it'll go from 99 to 96% really quick. I can't provide you with an idle consumption on the Mango Power E. And I, I do apologize for that because that is something that I know is very important to a lot of you guys out there. But for this, I just can't do it because I don't trust the state of charge that's being displayed on the screen. So hopefully someone out there has the right equipment to be able to test that other than from the screen itself or Mango Power will provide us with some information on what the true idle consumption of this unit is. And when I say idle consumption, I mean powering the system on and turning the AC inverter on. How much does it use per hour? So how many watts is it gonna use per hour with that turned on? And now that you've heard what I've gotta say about the Mango Power E, if you're still interested in this system, I'll have links in the description below so you can check those out. I'll also provide any type of discount code that I can get from Mango Power down there as well. So I hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, smash the thumbs up button. That's all that I ask. Hope to catch you in my next one.